This is the cheapest way that you could build a power wall. And uh, for those people that are on this video because they might be thinking about building one, I'm not gonna show you expensive equipment. And because I'm not in love with my face, I'm gonna hold the camera on my hand and show you exactly what I have over there. Now, one of these systems is built out of inverters, charge controller, batteries, and solar panels, which are on top of the house. And first, let's talk about what is my house usage and uh, what you should know as far as that goes. So I'm gonna put it here on the side for you guys, uh, or here. My house usage is about between 10 and 15 kilowatt hours a day. That's how much my electrical company is charging me for the electricity as an average on a daily basis. So when I build this system, I built it that way, so it's gonna be able to match that and bring my power bill as low as possible, and I reduced it about 90%. So instead of paying $120, I'm paying $20. And this is how much money I've spent so far. So one of the big expenses you're gonna have is gonna be the solar panels and the batteries. Now in my case, I have eight batteries over here. They're hooked up in two in series, so they're hooked up two in series and they're hooked up eight in parallel. Now they're different brands because I've tried different kind of brands. These are the smarter ones. Uh, these are made by Go Kilowatt. These are made by uh, Dr. Prepare. Uh, these are made by Lee Time, and these are made by Chin Batteries. I've started with those because I had them already. They were like really, really affordable, but then prices started to keep dropping and then I've started to find all kinds of deals and that's how I ended up with Chin, with Lee Time, with uh, Dr. Prepare, and then with uh, Go Kilowatt. But these batteries have the smart BMS and they, they have the screen on it. These are really, really cool batteries. Uh, they kind of like give me more information about how my system works, so I really like them. That's why I keep them on top because I really like them. I like the data. These batteries are 10 kilowatt hours in total. And because I don't want to run them at full power all the time, what I've done is I'm only able to pull about 8 kilowatt hour out of it. So throughout the day they charge and discharge about 8 kilowatt hours. Everything else, it's gonna come through the inverters from my solar panels direct. And I'm gonna show you this part over here, but first, how much I spent on this battery. So they're about $200, $250 each. Very, very easy to do the math. Thinking about $2,000 worth of batteries over here. So I would say this is $2,000 worth of battery with shipping and everything. Now, as far as the other electronics that I have going on over here, this inverter is made by EA Sun Power. It's about 150 bucks and uh, it can handle about 100 amps. So it's rated for 100 amps. I've seen it at 106. It was a little bit scary. It was one of those um, solar cloud uh, lensing events, but uh, most of the time it just sits uh, around 80 amps. As far as the temperature goes, it's running pretty cool right now. It's putting 2.1 kilowatts and um, it's at 24 degrees Celsius, which is pretty low, running at um, 80 volts. So that's $150. Now these inverters are made by Rain Breeze, or I think uh, the name company that actually makes them are called like Soyo. These are capable to do 650 watts each. So each one can do 650 watts. That means that I have about 1200 to 1300 watts of power that this one can provide back into the network. So if I'm pulling something from the network that uh, requires 1500 watts, then I could make my own 1300 and the 200 I'm pulling out of the network. But right now, uh, my house uses 590 watts. So if it uses a 590 watts, this one is providing 280, this one is providing similar, um, they're splitting between the two phases. So therefore they, they could compensate to 100% of the power that I'm using throughout the day. You can see here the graph, um, it dropped a lot since I turned the system on. Anything over 1200 watts, I will need more of these as far as that goes. These go for about $250, so you're looking at $500 for these two over here. They also come with that meter over there. Now, what they are controlled through, uh, they have their own separate lines. They're coming through this conduit over here. I had the conduit for free, so I've installed these lines by myself, but I did buy two Emporia uh, meters. This tell me how much power is going through each inverter throughout the day, so I could keep a track of how much power I produced. Those are not necessary, but for $12 uh, each, it's, it's well worth it. So they allow me to uh, turn on and off my inverters from my phone in case of emergency or I don't feel like running them. So that's really, really nice. Also, you could schedule certain things. All those devices, I've added those three coolers on top. That way I force air behind the passive cooling so it keeps them a lot cooler. Um, as you can see, this one is sitting at 23 degrees right now. It's very, very nice. And this one is, I think, what? Uh, 
24. So they are staying very, very nice and cool. The cooler you keep them, the longer they will last you. As far as the breakers and switches. So these are fuses with breakers built in. So this is 100 amp. Why is 100 amp? Because this one can provide 100 amps into my batteries. This one is not meant to trip this way when I'm charging the batteries. Uh, this one is very, very important. It's only about $12. And it's important because these batteries can provide 100 amps each. And if the amps come out, and one of this charge into this controller because it broke, then this will trip and protect everything else behind, solar panels and other things. I also have a fuse over here, similar. Uh, this is a 60 amp, it's going to my solar panels on top of the house. I left a little bit of room to expand. This is another $10. Um, the solar is gonna come through. It doesn't help with solar as much as doesn't let this one, if it somehow breaks, to discharge into the solar panels and blow up things up there. And then of course, these inverters, uh, each one has their own uh, DC fuse over here, which is specifically designed, these are about $10 each, and they're specifically designed to 40 amps. This one can only take 30 amps, so therefore, if these break and the, the batteries decide to discharge uh, this way, then, then this will take care of it and the whole trip. Now the wires that I have are they have two eight gauges going into each. And why is because it was cheaper that way. If you buy thick wires, it's a lot more expensive. But inside these is just one eight gauge wire that is carrying the power from here to inside there. So it's a little bit of overkill, but I had the extra wire, might as well just put it in there. This stuff over here, you could ignore it. It's just a little toy that I have. It tells me how much uh, power the solar panels are producing that I have in the backyard. It's completely different. And with that being said, what do I have on top of my house? So on top of my house, I have 3.5 kilowatts worth of solar panels, right? They don't really go to that ever, but solar panels are never 100% efficient, especially in summertime when they get hot. So I went a little bit what this inverter is rated for because it's rated to 100 amps. That's really, really what it matters. And this one can never really see 100 amps. Yes, I've seen 106 once, but for a very, very short period of time, uh, none of the, the fuses tripped, uh, but um, this, this inverter can handle it. This is pretty tough. It's a pretty tough little thing, especially if you keep it cool. And let's talk some numbers. So what I already told you is that my power bill went from an average of $120 to about $20. Now, in that $20, I have a $12.50 that a meter fee. That's the privilege of being hooked up to the network. I cannot disconnect from the network because if you do, it changes your lifestyle completely. You need a lot more solar, a lot more batteries. I'm gladly paying that fee to be able to be able to pulling out uh, energy out of the network when I have usage more than I could produce or it's three days of rain, which even in Vegas can happen. And then the batteries only last for about a day. You could buy more batteries, but these batteries, I run through them throughout the day. Now, I told, I told you in the beginning of the video, I'm using 10 to 15 kilowatts hours a day. So these are only eight. How is that even possible? How is that happening? Well, it's a very, very simple explanation. When the solar charge controller produces power, it produces about 2.2, 2.3 kilowatts for five hours out of the day. So at that time, it also has time to charge the batteries. But I'm only using 600, 500, that's my base load for my house. And then I have short bursts when I turn the microwave on or an air fryer or something like that, but that's for like 15, 20 minutes. And then the batteries get to like 60, 70, 80%, 100% throughout the day, depends on how much I'm using that day. And then after six o'clock when the sun goes down, then the batteries take over and then they, they slowly discharge throughout the night. Um, I have a huge amount of consumption between 6 and 10 because most of the people consume their power around 6 and 10. But after 10 o'clock when I go to bed, if the batteries are at 50% in the morning when I wake up, they're at 40%. So I only use about 10% out of that 8 kilowatt hours that I have in the batteries throughout the night. So it's a cycle. If I catch enough sunny days, then that cycle repeats and repeats and repeats. And what happens is that you get to a point where you have, you produce more power than actually you're using and therefore the inverters are providing 90% of the energy that you're using throughout the day. And I pull very, very little out of the network when I need so. And then if I have any extra power that is left over from one day to another, then the battery stores it and then the next day uh, it just gets used. Uh, it happened to me when batteries got full and I was wasting power from my solar panels because I had nowhere to dump it. And then sometimes when I, when I see that, I come over and plug in my electric bicycle or something like that that has like a four kilowatt battery on it and then I just dump the power over there 
just so I could have it for later on, but it's not necessary. The system is fully automatic. It doesn't have any fancy bells and whistles, no uh, special tools to monitor things. It's just set up the voltages, tell it what to do, and then walk away from it. Even though this one has a data port, I couldn't find a software for it to, to read it, and I really, really don't care about spending money on Raspberry Pis and other things that it's fun for one day and after that, it doesn't really matter. So with my solar panels that cost me approximately $1,500, maybe $1,700 to buy, I found them as a great deal on Amazon uh, for about 50 cents a watt. Uh, I am about $4,000 in here, maybe $3,000 in here. And how much power am I going to produce? Well, it depends very much of how many sunny days you have. Uh, in my case, in Vegas, I get about 300. And 300 sunny days, uh, this one can produce about two to two and a half dollars a day worth of electricity. That's how much I'm saving because it's 20 cents a kilowatt and I'm using about 15 kilowatts. So if you do the math, it's 2.5, 3 dollars a day. And 3 dollars a day, um, it's about $900 a year. So in three years, the system is free, if it lasts that long. And after that, then it's gonna be all complete savings. Now, I don't know how long these inverters will work. I don't know how long this charge controller will work. Uh, and I don't know how long the batteries will work. The batteries, I'm not too worried about it. They're supposed to, to last a long time, eight, nine, 10 years. Uh, the solar panels, I'm not too worried about those either. Um, the, the, maybe the weakest link that I have over here is maybe this charge controller because it's running 100 amps sometimes through it, maybe 80 amps constant, and that's five hours a day. And then you have these uh, inverters that when my uh, dishwasher is running, that they're running for an hour pegged to the maximum because the dishwasher is just so inefficient. It's just heating up that water and it makes these things uh, it's literally just pegs them to the maximum. So I hope I'm gonna get my money back. Uh, so far, no fires, everything is working fine. Uh, the only thing that I didn't mention, I have a small do-it-yourself uh, fuse box. So the panels are hooked up, nine strings. Each string has four 25 volt panels, open, open voltage. So I fuse them at five amps because each one provides about 4.5 amps. So I fuse them at five amps. I have a do-it-yourself um, fuse box or combiner box. Um, some people don't agree with it, but it works really, really well for me. You could do whatever you want. If you want to spend hundreds of dollars for one, go ahead. So that's my system. And it's running for about two months now. And I got my first about 60 bucks back. I have another 3,000 to go. So we'll see if it lasts. But I'm really happy and proud of it. And I hope this video helped you out. Thanks for watching.